what will be the worst team in the division, guaranteed, the Seattle Seahawks. And why do I say that? Well, we got to look back at the 2021 because it was a tailspin that year, mainly due to their quarterback, Russell Wilson, suffering a finger injury five weeks into the season. And when he came back, and in my opinion, he pretty much rushed back into that injury, um, whether it is him or the Seahawks coaching staff rushing him back into that injury. And basically, him being unable to do Russ magic, you know, him making all these unworldly plays, unworldly throws, scrambling out of the pocket like crazy um, with his feet and just making these crazy ass throws um, pre Patrick Mahomes <laughs> before there was Patrick Mahomes in the NFL. Um, but basically he was just unable to do any of that because it, he was clearly, he was clearly in fairness injured. He still clearly hasn't recovered from that finger injury alongside with a terrible offensive line. Um, the, his injury impacting the entire offense, DK Metcalf kind of having a down year and most importantly, having, one of the worst defenses, especially in the secondary, in the NFL, they would have their worst uh, season in a decade. Their worst, their first losing season since 2011, going seven and ten, missing the playoffs by what week, week 15. So, not a good season for Seattle. Not, not at all. Um, so you would think, going into their off season, that they would finally address the offensive line. They would finally address the secondary. They would give pieces for Russell Wilson to finally win a second Super Bowl in the Emerald City. But no, no, not at all. Because when free agency hit, the Seattle Seahawks and Russell Wilson decided that it was better for them to part ways, to move on from each other. Russell Wilson got traded along with the fourth round pick to the Denver Broncos for Drew Locke, Noah Fant, Shelby Harris, and a couple of draft picks. The this year's first and second round picks, and fifth round picks, and next year's first and second round picks. So a big haul for Seattle. And whether they want to admit it or not, there is a rebuild in the Emerald City. So for Seattle, yeah, and this is going to be a sad, sad year for them. But let's go in, going into their other offseason moves. They re-signed their quarterback, Geno Smith, to compete with Drew Locke. They, on the defensive end, they got Quandre Diggs, Kyle Fuller. Going back to the offensive end, they got Rashad Penny and tight end Will Disley to a weird deal. Um, I don't know why. But then when you look at their losses, they lost uh, a safety DJ Reed to the New York Jets. Uh, kind, of, kind of a key reserve to um, both Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams. And then they also managed to lose uh, tackle Jamarco Jones. So, I mean, he was okay-ish on the offensive line. And then, of course, Kerry Hyder Jr., uh, kind of an underrated piece in that in that defensive line for Seattle, going back to the 49ers. And then, not only do you trade Russell Wilson, um, your la one of your last remnants of that Super Bowl run in 2013, you also trade the last of the, uh, not trade, you also release the last of the Legion of Boom, Bobby Wagner, the linebacker. So Richard Sherman's gone. Ch Camp Chancellor retired. And then they released Bobby Wagner, who is now on the LA Rams. So Seattle is one, not once again, but they are now a shell of their former selves. So for Seattle, there are a lot of questions. There are a lot of questions, aside from the fact that a rebuild is clear, no matter what shape or what form, what 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 you want to make of it. Um, no matter who they drafted, whether it was offensive tackle Charles Cross in the first round, or an outside linebacker, Boy Maffe from Minnesota, or running back by the name of Kenneth Walker from Michigan State, they are going to rebuild. They are they, This is like the first phase of a rebuild, whether they want to admit it or not. But there are some other questions that they have to address. Like, who's going to be the starting quarterback? Is it going to be Drew Locke? Is it going to be Geno Smith? Or is it going to be some outside force that manages to waltz in there in Seattle and take that starting job? Who's it going to be? Because neither Drew Locke 
nor Geno Smith are the go-to guys. They're not the, the leaders of men to lead this rebuild for Seattle. So, I don't know. Who's going to be the guy to, you know, just waltz them along in this very down year? Speaking of the offense, who's going to be the starting running back for them? You, you got Rashad Penny, um, but you also have Chris Carson still there, who is very injury prone. And DJ Dallas, he's meh. So, I guess they're going to go by committee again. That's not great. And especially considering that the offensive line is going to be very, very bad this year. Um, the defense, I think they, they're still decent. They're, they got very slightly decent, if that's even a word. But that secondary unit, it's going to get torched. But maybe the pass, maybe the pass rush could be might might be better. But I, I doubt it. I doubt it. For Seattle in 2022. It, there's only one thing in mind for them. There's honestly only one thing in mind, whether you're a Seahawks fan or a football fan in general. Their top goal for 2022 is to suck so hard that you net a top five pick for a quarterback in 2023. That is your ultimate goal for 2022. Yes, you, like you don't want to deliberately tank. I mean, I know that's not Pete Carroll's thing, but... Do you really want to go with Geno Smith or do you want to go with Drew Locke or in the wild, wild world that Jimmy Garoppolo is released? Do you want to go? Do you want to go sign him off the streets and trust in him in your rebuild? Do, do you or do you want to go out and get Baker midfield? Do you? So your ultimate goal is to suck so much, but not like explicitly suck so much that you net a top five pick in next year's draft. So there's some good amount of talent in that draft class, by the way. So for Seattle, yes, they're, they're not going to be a good team, but there are some key games to, to watch out for them to either group. They could be a, a, you know, a fighting team in the elusiveness of suckage, or they're going to be a shit team like all year, all year long. That starts with their home opener in week one in the bright lights of Monday Night Football against their old pal on his new team, Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos on the Monday night. Russell Wilson comes back home, whether it's in the cheers of the fans or the boos of the of the 12. We'll see what happens there. Then you go out to San Francisco week two in a division matchup against Trey Lance and the 49ers. We'll see how... You, how Seattle does in the wake of, who knows, an impending loss to the Denver Broncos or maybe a surprise win. How do they respond to either one against, you know, a still le learning Trey Lance? Then you go to Detroit. This is the game that either makes or breaks your season because it determines that maybe you won't be so bad or you're going to totally suck so much this year. So... Other questions that I have for Seattle is that does Pete Carroll remain the head coach during the season or beyond the season? Now, I, I don't know how it is, is in Seattle or what Pete Carroll is like. I'm just a filthy casual guy in this chair. Pete Carroll, I mean, he he could he looks like a nice guy. He look he does look like a nice guy. He's a he's, he's a good head coach, but I I don't know. I don't think I he's like the the fit the guy to be leading this rebuild in Seattle. Like, I don't see him <clears throat> long-term leading the charge. So my question is, do they suck so much that E. Carroll is fired mid-season? Like, I hate calling for a job. Or do they let him, like, stretch it out? Do they let him play out this season and then just let him go? We'll see. And what about the quarterback competition? Like, whoever wins the starting job, are they going to hold it all season long? Or is it just going to be a swap out every time one sucks, one or the other sucks? We'll see. Either way, Seattle fans, you're going to be in for a very, very shitty season. Um, but who knows? You might surprise some people here and there. But honestly, 
you can look you can be looking at a top five or top ten pick around four to six wins. Six wins being generous, but this is not a good Seattle group. No matter if you have Tyler Lockett, Jamal Adams, DK Metcalf, they 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 those three alone can't save you. Those three alone cannot save you, especially with the quarterback or quarterbacks that you have. So Seattle, I wish you luck in 2022 as with the other teams in this division.